Joel Montalbano, the International Space Station Program Manager here in Baikonur. Joel, um, Soyuz here at the pad, ready to go on Thursday, on Friday for launch. 60 years almost to the day that Yuri Gagarin launched to begin humanity's exploration of space. Your thoughts reflect a bit, if you will, on the last 60 years, what it's meant for the United States and Russia, the international partnership to come together to reach the point that we're at today? Uh, great question, Rob. You know, Yuri's flight 60 years ago ignited human space flight. And for the last 60 years, we've been working to make it better and stronger. You know, some of the examples of international cooperation, we had the Apollo Soyuz, we had Shuttle Mir, and of course, the International Space Station. This year, we celebrate 21 years of continuous human presence on board the International Space Station. And throughout the lifetime of Space Station, we've involved over 108 countries across the globe that have done something on board the International Space Station, whether it be science or education or some other type of activity. It's just truly an amazing, amazing feat. This launch uh, on Friday begins uh, a three-week period, unprecedented. 14 astronauts and cosmonauts and four different spacecraft coming and going from your space station. Uh, characterize how daunting that uh, task is and uh, what that really portends for the future. You know, unprecedented is, is a great word for it. 14 people coming and going you know, over a three-week period. It's just a testament to the strength of the international partnership, the, the, the vehicle we have on board, you know, how robust it is. And it's also a testament to the U.S. on the fact that we're developing commercial crew vehicles that are flying astronauts to the International Space Station. The next launch of Crew-2 on April 22nd will be launching a Japanese astronaut for the second time. We're also launching a European astronaut for the first time on a crew vehicle. Our long-term goal is to have Russian cosmonauts on these crew vehicles and have astronauts on the Soyuz vehicles. And that sets us up to have the right people on orbit to address any contingencies. So truly an amazing time, and we're looking forward to it. Reed Wiseman, NASA's chief astronaut here at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Reed, uh, you flew on one of these things just a few years ago. Now you're overseeing the astronauts who are training to fly on these things, as well as other vehicles. But first and foremost, we're coming up on the 60th anniversary of the launch of Yuri Gagarin that started all of this. What are your thoughts? Reflect for a minute on how far we've come in six decades and how far we can come through the use of the International Space Station as a vehicle for international cooperation. Well, Rob, <clears throat> 60 years we've been doing this, and uh, we're here at Gagarin's, Gagarin's launch site. It's pretty awesome to be here. Um, 
and we've been flying with humans on the space station for 21 years. And the space station is our vaulting point to get to the moon, to get onto Mars. Uh, the science that we're doing up there, the crews that we're doing, the resupply vehicles, the crewed vehicles, it's all this burgeoning space economy that we're building in low Earth orbit so that we can go on and do bigger, bigger things across the solar system. You know, at this point, you've got to have a scorecard to keep track of who's coming and going from the space station. More than a dozen crew members coming and going in four different vehicles over the next three weeks. Did you ever think we'd get to this point where you'd see this much action? I, I never imagined we would get to this point where we would see this much action, but this is exactly where we've always wanted to be. Uh, we have vehicles coming and going across the entire space station, cargo vehicles, crewed vehicles coming from different countries, from commercial suppliers in the U.S. Uh, I think we have finally hit our stride on the space station. It's, it's really come together perfectly. You know, Mark Van Der Heij certainly is a space veteran at this point. Multiple EVAs, six months on board the station on his first flight. But he was a late addition to this crew. How intricate, complex uh, has been uh, the training to get him up to speed to do what will be required during Expedition 65? Well, Mark Van Der Heij is one of the finest astronauts I've ever met. He's incredibly capable. Um, outstanding spacewalker. So his training was extremely short, but he also had just come home. So we really had to dust off the emergency procedure training, uh, get him up to speed with his crew, uh, get him up to speed on the Soyuz, and, uh, and he's ready to go. And I really have to thank uh, the Russians and the, the uh, Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center for getting him up to speed so quickly. They've done a marvelous job. Steve Kerner, the Director of Flight Operations at the Johnson Space Center here in Baikonur. Steve, uh, ticket to ride behind you here for another uh, venture to the International Space Station. The launch coming almost 60 years to the day that Yuri Gagarin launched from a nearby launch pad as the first human to fly in space. How have the six decades of human spaceflight sort of blended together between countries and programs and goals for a common purpose of exploration? You know, Rob, uh, Yuri's mission was the the uh, initial, the, the spark, uh, the incentive to to kick off human spaceflight, and so to be here 60 years later, very impressive to think about all that's been accomplished. Um, perhaps competition early in a human spaceflight business was necessary to get us started, but uh, to sustain, to do this difficult thing called human spaceflight, certainly cooperation is necessary, and so it's been very impressive to see uh, the international partnership come together and. Uh, to uh, be able to do something like the International Space Station um, and to, to be here on this space pad on, on 60 years after Yuri's uh, mission is just impressive. The word difficult may be redefined over the next three weeks as 14 astronauts and cosmonauts come and go from the station in four different space vehicles. That, that's almost mind-boggling. It's daunting. How do you, as the guy who brings it all together at the Johnson Space Center from a flight operations standpoint, view the level of complexity here. Yeah, to hear you characterize it like that, it certainly sounds daunting. Um, but we look at each of those missions individually. Our processes are set up to make sure we, we pay particular attention to, to Mark's launch, to Kate's return, to the, to the Crew-1 return, the Crew-2 launch. Each of those are looked at separately with special vigor to make sure that uh, we're good to go to, to execute those missions. Um, I have no doubt, though, that in a few weeks when we look back on the success of all of that activity, uh, we'll certainly do it with some pride. Um, but, but those are good challenges to have. These, these are exciting times in human spaceflight, so, so certainly look forward to, uh, to seeing the success of those events as you characterize them. The complexity in of itself of Expedition 65, how complicated uh, with all of the, uh, the uh, crew changes and the rotations and the vehicles, cargo, commercial, that type of thing, how complex will Expedition 65 be for Mark and his crewmates? Yes, yeah, certainly very complex. Um, the actual ex execution of the mission is kind of the tip of the iceberg. We have spent considerable time planning and training and preparing for that. Um, yeah, you, you characterized just a few minutes ago the, the 
the traffic of crews coming and going, but we also have quite a uh, set of activities for Mark to do from, from payload's perspective. Um, just uh, in, in the June time frame, uh, cargo mission coming up with some new solar array capability that Mark will get to, to be a part of. Um, hope to fly the, uh, the Boeing OFT-2 mission in, in the middle of the summer. So lots of activities, but all of it has been planned for. Uh, Mark's ready, and I look forward to a successful expedition for Mark and his crewmates. Ken Bowersox, NASA's Deputy Associate Administrator for Space Flight. Uh, Ken, here we are, another Soyuz ready to go, and uh, under very extraordinary historic times as we approach the 60th anniversary of Yuri Gagarin's first flight from a nearby launch pad. Uh, reflect for a moment about what this all has meant in six decades of coming together with space programs and nations who were once adversaries now uh, working together for a common goal of exploration. Well, I, I think it is um, impressive to think that um, our Russian partners have been doing this for so many years um, and how similar it is to the to the first days when Gagarin flew. Um, but, you know, there were a lot of things that were different back then. Um, the relationships between Russia and America were different back when Gagarin flew and, um, and, uh, and John Glenn and uh, our American astronauts flew. Um, then over the years, we've, we've formed a partnership that was very strong. Uh, and, and, and now we have the future ahead of us uh, where together we'll uh, explore even even further out into the solar system. I think it's all all very exciting, and, and it all goes in, in little bitty pieces. You almost don't uh, n notice it happening as it goes, you know, uh, one rocket launch uh, every six months or whatever, step by step, uh, further and further out into the solar system, and hopefully together. The next three weeks, more than a dozen astronauts and cosmonauts coming and going from the space station in multiple vehicles. Uh, did you ever think we'd get to the point where we'd see this level of activity? Um, well, I think you'd probably get a lot of different opinions on uh, how much activity is reasonable uh, in the future and, and back then how much was reasonable for the future. But, yeah, I always thought that this would happen. I think we're going to see a lot more. I mean, humans are moving out into space. Uh, that's going to be a, 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 a new realm for us. We're going to go to new planets. Um, it, it may be 30 years away and maybe 100 years away, but it, it will happen. And it all started, you know, here uh, with, with Gagarin 60 years ago. You know, this morning's sunrise was punctuated by a beautiful moon hanging over this launch site, and I was struck by the thought of it's not just about all of this, but there's Artemis waiting in the wings, almost ready to go just a few months from now. What are your thoughts about uh, uh, the new program, the Orion flying for the first time, and how it plays into human exploration in the months and years ahead. Well, the Orion, the SLS, those are our tools for, for going uh, to the moon uh, and, and going beyond the moon. Um, we, um, uh, you know, have a lot of steps, a lot of things to learn uh, before we're ready to, to leave the cislunar system, the, the Earth-Moon system, and go to Mars and, and, and take those, those, those next steps. Um, and, uh, and Artemis is w the program that's going to help us build those, those lessons, gain that knowledge. Um, we're going to um, be going to the moon. We're going to go to the surface of the moon. We're going to work around the moon, building all the skills we need uh, to go to Mars.